Welcome to 10 Minute Murder, Brief and Bingeable True Crime. I'm Joe, the host, and thanks for joining today. Some of you have been asking if I would do an episode on live, like on Facebook Live or Instagram Live. My answer to that every single time has been absolutely not. And the reason and the reason for that is because y'all have no idea how much additional commentary I edit out of these things. Mostly because I'm actively trying to keep the episodes as close to 10 minutes as I can. And the other is, I don't want anyone to see how many times I mess up trying to pronounce names of people. I'm honestly terrible at it. For a guy that talks for a living, I'm not very good at it. So I've said no this whole time, but I was recently approached with a compromise. One that I think I will agree to. I'll do the episode just like I normally would, but I'll record a video of the whole thing from start to finish. If it's an absolute dumpster fire, no harm done, I won't post it. If it is postable, I will post it. So I think I'll do that. Maybe. I also drink a lot while doing this, not and not necessarily alcohol, but sometimes. Uh, I just mean that I can't stand to have a dry mouth. When talking for long periods of time, having a wet mouth is best. And, and that sounds whatever, and that is the kind of thing that usually gets edited out. Anyway, it's a strong maybe. Before we get going with your story today, this is a reminder to subscribe if you are new to listening to 10 Minute Murder, so that you'll always be able to find the show and never miss an episode. Also, connect with 10 Minute Murder on social media. If you have friends that also like true crime stories, please let them know about 10 Minute Murder. Links are in the show notes of this episode, as well as at 10minutemurder.com. If you'd like to get in touch with me for any reason whatsoever, you can email me, joe at 10minutemurder.com. Now, to the story. There are far too many missing person cases where after months of investigation and wild conspiracy theories about the murder and kidnapping, the disappearance turns out to be due to the brutality of nature. Wild animals, extreme weather, and large bodies of water can all cause a person to disappear, seemingly without a trace. But what about a murder that was initially thought to be nothing more than a tragic drowning, but later turned out to be foul play? This is exactly what happened in the case of Jerry Michael Williams, known as Mike. On the 16th of December, 2000, 31-year-old Mike Williams told his wife that he was headed out to go duck hunting. He took his boat and drove to Lake Seminole, planning to come home in a few hours. But when Mike didn't return by midday, his wife, Denise Williams, called her dad, telling him that Mike hadn't come back from his hunting trip. Mike's best friend, Brian Winchester, decided to go looking for Mike, taking his father along for the drive. They didn't find Mike at the lake, but they did find his truck abandoned. The search was quickly organized but ended early due to severe weather. As the hours ticked by, the hope of Mike being found alive dwindled. The search party believed that Mike might have run into trouble while hunting, and if he had drowned, his body likely would float to the surface in the area of the lake where Mike had parked his truck. But as time passed, there was no sign of Mike, even though his body was expected to emerge from the lake within the first week after his disappearance. The search for Mike was called off at the beginning of February, with no findings except for a hunting hat, which may or may not have belonged to Mike. While the search was closed, Mike's case was still open. As there was no evidence that he had died, and no evidence that he'd had an accident on his boat, and in not all but most missing person cases, the spouse of the victim is desperate for the search to continue, even when all hope has been lost. This couldn't have been more different to Denise Williams' response to the search for Mike being officially stopped. Although she had stayed out of the media spotlight during the search, she didn't protest that the search was being called off too early, seeming to accept that Mike was no longer alive. And just a day after the search finished, she organized a memorial service for her husband to take place. With mourners gathering to farewell Mike Williams, the question remained, if Mike had drowned... Where is his body? In Lake Seminole, it was unusual for a drowning victim to not be recovered in the weeks after the incident. One explanation for his body's disappearance gained traction. The search party members had reported seeing multiple alligators in the area at the time. 
and one of the members on an unofficial search organization that had been hired by Mike's mother, Cheryl, had an idea. Alligators may have eaten Mike's remains. Investigators began to consider the possibility. To them, it was plausible that alligators had bitten Mike's body into smaller sections and then the rest of his remains had been eaten by smaller lake scavengers. Four months later, a fisherman found something unusual in the lake, a pair of waders similar to what Mike had been wearing. Further searching uncovered a flashlight and a hunting jacket which had Mike Williams' hunting license in one of the pockets. But there was something strange about the jacket and waders. There was no sign of damage from alligators at all. Denise petitioned for her husband to be declared as legally dead, and a judge accepted her petition, believing that the jacket and waders were proof Mike had passed away, despite nobody being found. The question of how alligators had managed to undress Mike, leaving his clothes undamaged before eating him, remained unanswered. Immediately after Mike was declared dead, Denise withdrew his life insurance, receiving a sum of $1.5 million. She married Mike's best friend, Brian Winchester, and the couple lived in the same house that Denise and Mike had once called home. As it turned out, Brian was the one who had organized Mike's life insurance policies just a couple months before his fatal trip. Brian and Denise lived together until 2012 when the couple separated due to Brian's sex addiction. This led to a turn of events that nobody could have predicted. Denise Williams was kidnapped. Brian snuck into Denise's car while she drove to work. On August 5, 2016, he pulled a gun on her and demanded that she follow his orders. Denise pulled into a parking lot instead of obeying Brian, where Brian told her that he didn't want to get divorced and felt like he had no other choice after Denise stopped communicating with him. And he didn't want to kill her, but he was determined to end his own life. Thinking carefully, Denise was able to talk Brian down from his potential murder-suicide. Brian apologized to her, and Denise promised not to go to the police. But she hightailed it to the police station immediately after Brian left. Police arrested Brian Winchester for kidnapping and assault, charging him with two felonies. Denise begged for protection, as she feared that Brian would kill her. At Brian's trial, the Mike Williams case was not mentioned, but many people Mike's mother, Cheryl included, were suspicious of Brian and Denise and hoped that Brian's arrest would lead to some sort of closure for them. But according to a friend of Brian's who was later interviewed by the police, Brian had an additional motivator behind his attempt at kidnapping. He was becoming more and more concerned that, after their divorce, Denise might say something to the police about Mike Williams' supposed drowning. The contents of Brian Winchester's agreement with prosecutors has never been revealed to the public, but it ensured that he would avoid a life sentence. What we do know is this. In October of 2017, Florida law enforcement received information that led to the discovery of Mike Williams' body, which had been buried and sandwiched between sheets of plywood at the end of a road less than seven miles from Mike's childhood home. Special Agent Mark Perez held a news conference where he announced that the body of Mike Williams had been found and the case was confirmed to be a homicide. Almost all of the clothing was intact, and so was his body. The alligator theory was finally put to rest. Denise Williams was arrested for murder on the 8th of May, 2018. At her trial, an audio tape was played to the courtroom. On the tape, Brian Winchester admitted that he had pulled the trigger and shot Mike Williams, but that the murder had been Denise's idea. In his testimony, Brian admitted that he had dated Denise in high school and that they had remained in love with each other despite marrying other people. As their affair grew more intense, Brian and Denise were unable to divorce their spouses due to religious beliefs of Denise's family, so they began to consider another option, murdering Mike. On the day that Mike went missing, he had not gone alone, as Denise told authorities. He had been invited to go along with Brian Winchester. Once the two men were on the boat, Brian pushed Mike overboard, hoping that the heavy waders would make him sink. However, Mike managed to grab onto a tree stump, and Brian panicked, shooting the other man in the face with his shotgun. Now, there was no way the incident could pass as an accidental drowning. Instead of leaving the body in the lake, Brian buried it at the end of the same dead-end street where it would be later discovered. 
The prosecutors also shared another piece of key evidence, a secretly recorded phone call between Brian Winchester's ex-wife, Kathy Thomas, and Denise. On the phone call, Kathy, who had agreed to help police with the case, told Denise that she knew what happened to Mike. Despite Denise repeatedly changing the subject, she eventually asked Kathy, what do you know? Denise was given a life sentence for Mike's murder in February of 2019, and she obviously remains in jail to this day. Mike's murder might have been discovered much sooner if the investigators hadn't leaned into the alligator theory. The only thing needed to debunk this theory was one key fact. Mike had disappeared in December, and alligators don't feed during winter. <laughs> 